Alright, so you remember what happened? It's been a while. What's the last thing you did? No, you remember you, uh, it was the goblin leaders. Remember the yellow tribe goblins? Yeah. You slaughtered all the yellow tribe goblins we, and you defeated the leader. We trapped him. Yeah, you trapped their, like, wolf rider. Yeah. You captured him. I and shot then, an ear off. Look, we got shot his ear off. Yeah. That was the leader, and then you guys ended up killing the leader. Yeah, you should have killed him in the first place. Instead of shooting an ear off. He had root food him, so then you could get him for the big one. That is the site. No. What else? Remember you were up in the mountains? Yeah. Looking for the caves of the monsters? Yeah. And you know that the hobgoblin cave is like right next to the crypt. But after you guys defeated the goblins, you guys said you wanted to go back to the town, right? Okay. Yeah, Mason always talks. He always talks trash to the goblins. We've got, we've got a town to save, but we gotta go talk trash. Trash talker over here. Yep. He he's like, and he and he's like, I call him Poopy. Okay. Call him Poopy. So you get back to the camp after um, defeating all those goblins. And this is a bit later, so just imagine you're around your campsite after all that work. You get back, and remember you have Kimmick Alebeard there. Yeah. You have Gren and Colo the dog. You have Vince and Brennan. You have Gink and Gink and what's his name? They're the two boys, Eldier's grandkids. Remember? Yeah. So well, you yeah. get to the camp, and Parlo and McGorgle are still with you. And you guys come back and you're all beat up. Everyone's all beat up. And um, they say, uh, Darren is there as well. He says, so, how did you guys fare? Did you get him? Yes. Good. You killed that leader? Yes. Well done. I knew I could trust you. Well, I have the men getting ready to pack up to head back. But, uh, you guys look pretty beat up, so we might want to stay here another day and, and, um, get a little bit healed up and then head out in the morning. What do you say? Good. Nice day of relaxation? Yeah. Alright, I'll send Vince and Brendan out to go get some, uh, <clears throat> some fresh game, and we'll have a good dinner and celebration of defeating the goblins. Alright, during the day, these two come walking up, and you see... You see an elf, uh, another elf wizard. And she's got heavy winter clothes because it was she's a scrawny elf and she's cold. And she's got a nice looking wizard walking staff. And then you see a, another little halfling like Corey's Parlo, little little girl uh, wearing some leather armors and stuff. She's got a bow on her back. Looks like a joke. And. Um, they, uh, they meet up with Darren, and uh, Darren's like, Oh, you made it. Heard you we were going to get some reinforcements. How was the trek here? What is it? Sinovia. How was the trek here? Long. Yeah. Long for my short legs here. You running into any trouble? No. Good, good. Well... If you didn't run into any trouble up down there, then you're definitely going to run into some up here. It's just the odds of it. So what, what are your names? Rose Shadow Possum. Ah. Nice to meet a nice, another hobbit. <laughs> and you? Zenobia. Ah. It's Rose. <laughs> Spell Sage. Nobia Spell Sage and Rose Shadow Blossom. Ah, well, come meet the rest. And um, so, Darren introduced or says uh, these two here would like to join the party. They heard of our adventure and our quest to rid the valley. Would you have them? Sure. sure. Okay, introduce yourself. Thanks for letting me be. My name is Adrian. My name is Hayden, and I'm always here. Where are you guys? Where's your people? Oh, uh, I'm right there. Right here. Hey, 
So they're heavily armored humans, mm -hmm. full armor. You guys are with the horses. Mm -hmm. She is uh, another elf, so both of you are elf, but she's more of like a wood elf, so she's got like leaf robes and like she's nature stuff. You're more of like and a high elf, so you're more like She's got her belly hanging out. You're like a like a <laughs> snooty high elf. Oh, oh yeah, that's me. Megan's more in tune in with nature. <laughs> and uh, Parlo and uh, McGorgol uh, come up, and McGorgol's like, Ah, oh, pleased to meet you. And Parlo says hi and all that. And then you, so you relax the rest of the day. The boys go out and hunt. Vince and Brennan go out and hunt, and they come back with a nice uh, deer. And in the evening, you guys chow down on it. Um, the goblin is sitting in the back of the cart all chained up still, and he's like, Does anybody want to see what he's trying to say, or just leave him? Is he in a box? He's, uh, so this is different, just imagine you're around the campsite. So, he's like, and you're the only one that can understand, so you're going to have to go over there as well. He's like, oh, oh, oh. Him, but well, just keep in mind, this is real, realistic, so... Oh, yeah. But do you want you information from him? But do you want information from him first? Yes. Yeah, yeah then you have, have to... He has to make sure he gives you information first. I'm not giving him anything. Why don't you trade it? There information you for food. Give me something worthwhile, and I'll give you a little bit of money. Give us something useful. Where have you been, anyway? We've been fighting! You mean my family? You mean yes. fighting my family? Yes. I see they tore you up. <laughs> they were probably stole all your loot. Well, we killed your king. You what? <laughs> <laughs> so that's what you fought against him? Yes, I did. I Prove it. Yes, I did. Prove it. I don't believe you. I don't have myself. Well, didn't you guys cut off all the ears, remember? Yeah, the, uh, yeah. his ear. Show him his ear. Yeah, show him his ears. So you pull the bag, so... Remember you guys have a bag full of ears, because yeah. you have this... Lovely. Basically, all the monsters that you kill are worth different... Like, if you kill orcs, you want to cut their tusk out. It's worth money, five silver piece per tusk. Ears are one silver piece per goblin. So... You guys have a bag full of all of his family's goblin ears. Do you want to show him? Or yes, no? I want to show him that ears. So you just pull out all these ears and he just starts crying. Mommy. He sobs and he cries and he's quiet now.
Sleeping the night, you get one hit point back. So so if only if anybody's so down hit points. Yeah, do you have a line that you want to do? Is it a pen? Okay. Can you go to the tavern now? Is that a pen? You got it? Okay, now I have eight. So Parlo has Am I supposed to? I don't have six left. Point. No, you guys are full health. Are we supposed to have circles in our hit points? Yeah, I can put circles for you. It's easier that way. What? And then it the Gorbel has 16. four. All of you guys are beat up pretty good. Yeah, I only have three. Um, but now McGorgle wakes up, and since he's a cleric, he now has um, he now has his spells back, so he can do some healing. So who's the worst off? I think Artro. Artro, uh, yeah. how much do you Atro. have? Atro. Three. Okay. So McGorgle comes up. Close your eyes, son. And he puts his hands on your shoulders and whispers a prayer in Dwarven. And you get two hit points right back. That's his channel life spell. And now he has um, three cure minor wounds and three cure light wounds to give out. So those are the bigger healing. So 
He's going to... Yeah, he's going to take care of others before he does himself. So who else needs it? Do you need a spell? I Okay. Ooh, six points back on the first spell. Wow, so much more. Can he get more? I get it. Yeah, he's got he's got several spells. So clerics get their spells back every morning. So I think I think a tro needs some water. If everybody else is full health, he's only got three, five, and now you have eight. Yeah, three more back. Six more back. Oh, he's in good shape. Yeah. All right, and he's got a couple more. So. He's going to do another one on you. Four plus one is five. Yes. Sorry. So he's got one more of those left. Does anybody else need a big one? How many do you have left? How many do you have? How many of those circles don't have a line? Maybe he'll keep the, the last one, just, just, just in case. Goodness. And then he's going to give you each one more. Yes, I only have one left. Now you get one so more. You get one, one more hit point. He's going to use more. Mark off one two more minors. Now you're going to have 15. So now, for the rest of the day, he's only got go. one minor wound and one light wound left. So he's got two healing spells left, but only one of them is really worth anything, except for one hit point. We have three full health. Two that have pretty good health. Um, and he's also got the scroll of cure light wounds as well that he could cast. Um, remember that one is written on human skin. So you guys are healed up, and you get up the next morning, and everyone starts packing up. Going to the tavern. Heading back to town. So first you got to go down the, the trail, and then hit the road, and then take the road back, right? Yeah. yeah. So we don't bump into anything. Yep. Yeah. Which we time. So, you're headed down the trail, and this is kind of the, the group, everyone together. You guys are not going to be meeting up front. You're probably just back here walking together because you guys are friends. I don't think we have a horse. None of the legs can't walk as fast. So, you have a horse, and you have a horse. So, you two are on your horses, following behind Darren's walking ahead. They have the two scouts out as well, the, uh, Vince and Brennan, and then Parlo's also working as a scout because he's a ranger, so he's going up on things and looking out ahead. Is that bird on his own? Okay. Yeah, he's got an eagle with him. So, um, while his eagle is out hunting, looking for food for himself, you guys are going through, and uh, all of a sudden, Parlo says, guys, oh, oh, oh. And everyone stops. Parlo's Corey's character. Because he was scouting. He says, there's something, something laying up in those rocks. You can feel in this area, the, the, the wind uh, picks up a little bit and it's cooler. The air feels colder on your skin. Um, then it says, you feel that, Alicia? Zenobia, you guys are magic sensitive. What's Zenobia? That's what Zenobia, I'm that's her name. Elf named Zenobia Spellsage. It's cold, unusually cold. Parlo says, Look, Darren, it's up against here. And he points it out. And laying on this rock is some sort of big white. It's covered in blood. It looks dead. It's just like a pile of white fur. Something. It's not moving or anything. This could be a trick. Go check it out. It could be like a trick, like something like a. Darren, like Darren said. Someone has a some like type of magic ring, and they're hiding in a like daddy bone, and like maybe he got a ring. Wait, 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 maybe it's one of the ring off. Maybe it's one of the bombs. Hey, you guys talk some monkey each other, not me. All right, let's see what it is. We got. Yeah. We don't know what we're gonna be up against until we see it. Last time when we see this blue kind of something was. You can see the bones cut yeah. off. Yeah. Let's see if one of our scouts can tell us what it is so we know what we're up against. So, they're generally, so the scouts that they have are more just to watch over things. Hope they don't really fight as much. Hope they're just that kids. Branch, that they so you guys do the fighting. But can they see what it is so we can be prepared? To they're not going to go up to it. So Darren says, uh, you want someone, someone, someone go up 
there. We can't we can't have all these horses go past because if something I don't know if it's dead, there could be packs of wolves nearby, there could be bears nearby. Well, we can't. How about one of our scouts like him if they don't fight? He can go over there. Harlow. So Harlow, Harlow can says, on this walk and look at him. Okay, Harlow sports, says, right? yeah, that's a good idea. I'll get in closer. So, Harlow comes down and he sneaks around. Everyone's quiet. He gets up on this rock and he looks. And it's just a, a big pile of light. It's not. Looks like a yeti, oh, but it's it's laying face down. It's face down, and it's I can see it's intestine hanging. This thing is it stinks. It must be dead. I think we're okay, <clears throat> unless someone wants to get in there closer and just double check, or we can just move past it. Yeah, how about you go? I'm not going. I'm just a little halfling. You're no, the ones in armor. No, how about you just I think it's dead anyway. No, how about you just step off and go here and we'll come and we'll come over. Go together? Yes. Okay. I'm not going myself. But you're coming with us or you're coming with us. I think he's dead anyway. So. Don't get too close. Don't get too close. up here to get a better vantage point. So you guys meet up, and I'm assuming you leave your horses, right? Yeah. So you leave your horses back here, and the three of you are going together? Yeah. yeah. I need him, too. There's somebody else. So you get to about there, and you're looking at it. Go ahead and roll, um, see your d20s. Let's see how, how, yeah, your red ones. Red one. Okay. Oh, seven. Thirteen, so it it seems it just looks dead, and it looks like you can see its head's turned away from you, and it's sprawled out, and it looks just like remember the the, the monster you guys defeated at the crypt, the big white one, yeah. the yeti. Yeah. It looks like it's one of the yetis, yeah, but it's it's like smell. it's got to be dead. It smells dead. It's got its rib is popped out. It's got holes in it from stab wounds. That, no, that's not a Yeti. That's from the Yeti didn't have stabbed. Well, we stabbed him up pretty good. I mean, it's probably not the same. There's no way it's the same one. Yeah. He was way up in the crypt. Wait, we it can't killed be. him. I never killed him. Yeah, he's there dead. Could this one, one could be, one. maybe there's a family of Yetis, and this is a different one. I say we move by fast. Just move by fast? Maybe, fast but what? No, wait. Yeah, if we move, as we move by fast and quiet, Maybe but if it, what if someone trips and falls and makes a big sound and the, and the, they can What's hear? What's the chance we take? We, got, uh, yeah. we have to keep moving. Yeah, we have to. But what gonna, if they just have to be walk, They just have to watch where they're walking. They're going to watch the walk diligently. And so you, just, you want to try to move everyone by? Yeah, like really fast. Yeah, is that all? The, is that as close as you guys want to get for now? Yeah, we'll just try. If we don't, but what, he's what like right the, here. What if they have like good listening ears? But if we think he's dead. dead, we think he's dead. All right, I say we need to move by fast. Yeah, let's move by fast. We're gonna move. Carlos says, I just hope there's no bears or anything nearby coming to smell how, this. How can bears be white? Just no, no, we're coming to get through it. We're gonna get. We need to get there. through here quick if we're going to get yeah, going. Yeah, maybe you want to get your horses through first if there's... So, no Harlow comes up now. to here and, uh... We run back to our horses. And what do you tell Darren? I said, Darren, we see that. It's dead. We see the leaf. We see all these yucky things. We smell disgusting. We see the stab. All right, well, if we're going to go by, we need to do it quick. I know. That's what we said. All right, let's go. All right. So you guys get back up on your horses. Really fast. He literally moved past him. No, I'm tripping that pile. He'll be dead. Who's who's dog is that? Oh, that's him. Alright, dog. Come on, move quick, move quick. They don't. We don't want to. We don't want. They don't want to hear some bears coming out. Alright, well, the more you keep yapping, the more it's gonna be loud. Yeah, that's what I He's up 
here. Yeah. So are we just determined we pass it at this point? So you guys, you're right next to it, everyone's going by and everything seems to be fine. That, that thing's not moving at all. But you feel a chill go down your spine. Everyone, remember how it was colder? It seems to get a lot colder now. Oh, no. And you hear a roar. Not a roar, but you hear a It echoes. It echoes through the trees. Yeah. So as you're trying to get by, you can see that that fur starts to twitch and move. And it turns over. When he turns, his eyes glow a bright blue. His guts are hanging out. He is dead. But he stands up on his own. His ribs are hanging out. He's falling apart. He's undead. He's zombified? Everyone! Brace yourselves! It's woken from the dead! You must fight! <clears throat> Alright, roll initiatives. Hard fight. Wait, are some of them being packed over here? Are those shorts out? <laughs> I guess they are. <laughs> Dead, undead, zombie yeti stands up, and you can tell from the stab wounds that it has, you recognize this is the one that you killed way up in the mountain, wow. but somehow it's here now. And he's, around him is just like this floating mist of blue and purple sparkly cold death aura. Could it be a, a magic spell that was cast on him? So you, as um, magic users, you know that this is some sort of together? necromantic, this like is necromancer not. magic. This is, it doesn't just happen. Right. There's a necromancer it's that has so risen there. So like a person that, right? Like <laughs> yeah. Something that's Bad dead magic. doesn't just wake up. There's Bad magic magic. involved. Something, something rose it from the ground. <laughs> so can we can't gang up on him? Yep. So first is Rose. What are you doing? I have an arrow. I'm going to try to shoot it with my arrow. That's okay. very far. So you're right here. So you can move up to your movement and then shoot. So your movement is... Which one am I looking at? 30. 30. So you can move 30, which is 6 squares. So you can move... You can climb up stuff. You can do wherever, where do you want to go. You can move I want to go up on the rock and hit him. Can I go up on the So you want to try to climb up the rock? Yeah. So maybe this round... This round you can double move. If you don't attack, you can double move and get like all the way here and start climbing. And the next round you could probably make it to the top. Yeah, I want to get to the top. So she's going to go 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 50, 55, 60. So that gets you right here. So next round you'll try to climb up and get to the top. Next is... Next is Alicia. What are you doing? You are here. Okay, I'd have to move forward. Oh. Arrow. Arrow. What is it? Arrow. Oh. What's it? I'm going to move forward and then cast the sleep spell. Okay. Is six facing up in there? Uh, yeah, your movement is 30, 40, so you can move 8. As long as you, so your your sleep spell has a range. You don't have to get too close, it says, right? 90? Range is 90. Yeah, so you can shoot that thing from where you're already at. Oh, so I'll just, I'll stand up here. Yep, that works. Perfect. Okay, so she stands up and swirls her arms and casts a sleep spell. And now, we'll see if he resists. Try. Wait, no, actually, you're the one that, um, 
I roll my d20? No, you don't. Not on sleep. Not on sleep. Because you're not doing turn on dead. You're just doing sleep. And he is saving the... <laughs> Okay. Just like this, and it doesn't seem to slow down. Uh -huh. Next is Hayden. What you doing? You're right next to this thing right here. You stay on your horse or hop off? Hop off it. All right. What do you have? No what? Long sword. No <laughs> I'll get my long sword out. Charge it. Yeah, just charge it. Rah! Charges in, roll to attack, red one. Eighteen. Very good. Okay, so remember your long sword, you're gonna add five, and then if you do damage, it's gonna be this one plus three. Which that definitely hits. So roll your damage. Plus three, six points of damage. Very good. Yet. Next is the allies. Okay, so the dog is going absolutely berserk, and he's worried that his dog's going to go in there and get killed, so he runs over here and starts chaining his dog up, tying it up over here so it doesn't charge. There's pack horses. So he's over here working with his dog so it doesn't take off. Is that Grumpy's the, uh, there? Yeah, Gramps all the way in the back. And uh, he's a cleric, so this is his foe. He's specialized against them, so he's got to get all the way to the front. So, Parlo is a part of this. He's going to go ahead and take a crack. Is there Parlo if you do? And, um, yeah, that's not going to hit. He misses. It goes through the trees. Uh, this guy here sets up a perimeter. He's coming out here to watch the back, make sure nothing else comes. As well as this guy, he comes around here and he's watching this area, making sure nothing else comes. Waiting to climb up my rock. Um, <laughs> and Kimmick starts to shoo the horses away, as well as this guy, to get them so they don't get uh, spooked. And this guy as well starts to pull to bring these guys away. Next is McGorgle. McGorgle. Uh, gets up on his or he's already on his horse. He, rawr, he's like, rawr, you foul beast, I will get you. Gets to here and dismounts. <clears throat> Next is Zenobia. What, what, <laughs> what would you do? You have spells? So you have your spells. You have, have a magic a, missile. There you go. You just got to yes. Always, <laughs> when in doubt, your magic <laughs> missile. So, but you need to... I have 130 range. So keep in mind, you can, you can prepare two zero-level spells a day. So, you only have that one, so... You know, you have two of those prepared, which isn't going to do you any good here. Just do it light. Everyone goes so hard. You're going to erase these. And then you have two first-level spells and one second-level spell. And your second level is only when you know, so just do that. You have that one, the mirror image one. Um, and then you're... Choose two of these and you can duplicate them. You're going to want two magic missiles, probably. Okay, so when you shoot your magic missile, it's just like shooting the force in Star Wars. It's like you're. Yep, and first you're going to want to get. Maybe uh, you're shooting through everybody. Yeah, don't get us all. Can you get up on a rock? Yeah, you can come to like here as well. And you go right over top. As long as you can see it, it it's like a missile. It'll I can't see anything over there, so I don't know where I'm looking at. Well, your character, the character, he's straight across from you. Oh. Yeah, you're good. As long as you can see it, the magic missiles always hit. They're like, they go around and they hit. You just need to be able to see it. Okay. So you go, and then it's going to be a 1d6 plus 1 damage. I don't know what a 1d6 is. This? Six sided die. Regular dice. And then the, yeah, the white one. Very good. Six points of damage. Uh -huh. Okay. Hits him, knocks his arm back. Ow! Oh, he looks down at you, and you're next. Well, Maze. I want to just like, kind of like jump in like the stab him in the stomach. Okay. 
jumps off his horse and charges up, and these guys are up in his face. Come out, please. Oh, no. Oh, no. I always get low numbers. Now it's the enemy's turn. It's okay, guys. I'm going to come and you two, you two are right there together. He's got claw and claw. He goes to claw both of you. The left one is a 16 and the right one is an 18. So 16 plus 6 is a 22. That hits you. Uh, and then does this one hit you? 18 plus 6 is a... Yeah, that definitely hits you. So both of you got hit. It's a 1d6 each. One point on you and two points on you. Barely anything. But let's roll the dice. Just roll the dice. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. Next one could be way higher. All right. So you guys are still in the best position. The end of the round. You can feel. You guys are so close to this thing. You feel your heart. Cold, like your heart is being chilled. It's so cold and it's so dead. You feel like you're getting tired around it, like fatigue. Your muscles feel weak, and both of you take an additional point of damage. Nine, fifteen, or thirteen. See, mark off this one. Mark one more. So that is from the. He's got like some type of aura of death around him. So you two took the damage for being close. So back to Jill. Ropes. Alright, there's plenty of hand holes. That's no problem. So now you're up to there. Um, where do you want to go? To here? I don't want to hit. I want to go on that little one so that I can get this better. Because I have a short Perfect. Alright, can I hit him on this side? Right? So yeah. you're out there wait till next time because that was a lot of work getting up there. So I can't shoot. But now you're ready. As soon as next turn, boom. What did you do? What? When you got over to Did you hit him too? Yeah, yeah I, I so they both shooting. got him. Or oh, no, okay, so they him. both got him in the gut. And now, can you? Can yep, you, Alicia. Well, I have to wait to my next turn, but I'm ready. Oh, oh okay. Just give me to my next turn. <laughs> <laughs> well, because that was, took a lot of work to climb that, so it took up most of your turn. Can I detect secret doers on one of the cursing ones? Like, that's just like that just happens if you're okay. near well, if you're sure, near like, a secret if door. I could dis oh, okay. If I you're near a secret door because you're an elf, I would roll that and see if you notice it. But you can specifically look for secret doors. I was, okay, I. I but that's only if they're there. You're in the middle of the woods, so the more doors. than like doors. I thought it was doors. Because um, a doer. <laughs> Like a doer. A good doer. Someone who does something. Oh, a doer? <laughs> a doer? Do I have to mark off on this one? Yeah, you're used one. Yeah, Alright. Um, so I was trying to see if I could detect if there was like some sort of evil magic or elf nearby that's casting that. So, you want to what? Detect magic? Yeah, like if I could feel like if the energy, because it's so cold, if it's coming from somewhere. It's coming from him. Oh, so, because right. you can't really feel, you just feel a general coldness. Mm -hmm. But you can see around him, he's got like a glow of like sparkling purple and blue. Okay. So there's like some type of magic aura that he has. Okay. That it, that's why they took that extra point of damage. Okay. Um, the only spells that you have is magic dart, not and magic missile right now. So, and and sleep that you already used. Alright. Next is Hayden. Oh wait, I didn't go. Oh, you didn't do it. Go. What are you going to do? Sorry. I'm going to throw a magic dart. Alright, so that's just one point, right? Yeah. Okay. Hits him with a magic dart. And you, Hayden. Um. Can you stay where you're at or do you want to rotate or? Maybe I'll, can I like back up and like do I have a bow? You want to back away from him? I think you have a long bow. Didn't you say yeah, you, you have, have a long bow or something? Can so you, you see this next time? Yep, so you're going to add a plus three, and if you hit it, it's the same dice as before. It's just one to eight. So you can feel that, that cold, and you're like, i got to get away from him. Your horses also start to run away, back away from him. So how far do you want to go back? 
That's about as far as you can yeah, get. Yeah, I can go like there and like aim at his leg. Okay, no, don't shoot. shoot. Oh, no, you're just going to shoot at him. It's the best shoot. possible part. Best spot possible. Just shoot this red one? Yep. Yeah. Oh, that's not going to hit. But you got to make sure that you don't hit him because he's next. So I need to roll the ten. Zero. Oh, crap. All right, you need to roll to attack. You have a ten percent chance of hitting that square, and you did. So you hit the square that he's in. So you have to make sure you didn't hit him. So roll your attack again. You have to see if it beats his armor class. Wait, what is his armor? Mm -hmm. What's your armor class, Mason? 18. So you need to roll an 18 or higher? <coughs> 12. Plus 3. Oh, it misses. You're good. good. He missed both of you. The arrow keeps going. Next yeah, is the allies. Oh, they continue to get the uh, the horses and stuff away. And McGorbel keeps running in. Uh, Parlo... Uh, yeah, he'll take a shot. It's a risk because you're standing there. Right That's a four. That misses. He misses as well. Horses are running away. They're just taking care of here. Yeah, everything's the same with them. Next is Zenobia. They're trying to keep everything together so the horses don't flee. So all I can do is spell them. We have a, I have a dagger. You can throw daggers. Um, but if he's magic, what's the likelihood that that that's gonna work? Could, but the thing is, you gotta get fairly close to throw that here. So I can. He's I only have one magic missile left. I can do yeah. that to him. Yeah, you can do that again. Or can she just make close? It? Most of your spells are more utilitarian. So I'm rolling this again. Yep. Okay. Three points. He looks approximately <clears throat> half. Health of what he starts. Well, it's hard to tell because he's already dead. So he's just getting more dead. Half undead. <laughs> Alright, so like what do you have to do? Nice. There he goes, right in your face. I'm just gonna run away. <gasps> what? What? No. Do you want to back up and Maybe try back to up do, do you have a bow? Is he too scared? Do you have a bow? The tro is overwhelmed with fear. That's fine. Okay. So, how far do you want to go? That way you're at your other so if, you, oh, behind that you gotta move half speed or else he can take a free attack at you. So what is your speed? Twenty, because you're heavy loaded. So you can move ten feet back. If you move another ten feet, you get a free attack on you, which I don't think you want. <laughs> but he might chase you down anyway, because he's next. So it might be it doesn't matter, whatever you want to do. Yeah, perfect. Mm -hmm. So you both pull your bows out. You have a bow, right? Yeah. Long bow, it's mm -hmm. the bottom. Plus three. Okay, roll the hard face. Nine plus three. Oh. No, his AC is 15. All right, it's his turn. Roar! <laughs> sees the cleric, actually, is what it is. <clears throat> no. You're right in front of him, and he's undead, so he's just going to attack. So he just throws two attacks straight at you. Eight misses. Ten plus six misses. Both of his right. attacks miss, bro, bro, but you're close to him, so you so take one undead. point. Like... <laughs> you take one point from his cold aura. And now Jill's there, and you can shoot him in the back. Yeah. You get a plus two because you're shooting from behind. Yep. You get an additional plus two. Oh, that hits. Very good. So now you roll your damage. Which is this one? Short bow is uh, 1d6. It's the yellow one. She might be a square, but she's 91. Hey, any damage is good. Any damage is good. Alright. Next is Alicia. How much health do you guys have left? Thirteen. Yeah, because you got those spells. Good thing you 
saved it. And made the rest of the world. <laughs> Which I hate it, because they're crazy. Um, can I move? Oh, no, no. So I have an idea. I was thinking of going to the goblin, telling him, if I set you free off of these chains, you have to help us get through. Is it if, I, I go, okay. if I take the chains off you. Yeah, 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 I will, for sure. Can a goblin help against it, whatever that is? Yeah. Yes, I can hire him. Give me a weapon. Give me no. a weapon, I'll fight. What do you want me to do if I don't have a weapon? You, you, Distracted. you <laughs> have to, you, you no weapon, you don't get a weapon. You need to be the distraction, and we'll keep you safe. What do you want me to do? I want you to get the Yeti to turn the other way so we can attack him from behind. Uh-huh. So you, I'll run that way. <clears throat> yeah, let me out. Let's go. I'll do it. I'll do it. And then I want to use the chain as a knock yes. spell. Or can I do that in the same thing? Uh, so... Like, uh, so... Oh, how are you talking to him? You're ten miles away. I'm ten get miles over, away? Okay. Get over here okay. and then talk. Well, okay, the conversation just happened. Now it happens. <laughs> now you're out of movement. Now what? So you talk to him, you release him? I'm going to release you. But you can't run. Oh, you told me to run! You, well, you can't, you have to stay. You can't run away. I have to oh. run, but I have to stay! I hate humans, Mills! Come on, what am I doing? We're Let me go! We're keeping alive, aren't we? Yes, let me go. Let me go. All right, your turn's over. You're taking forever. Next is. <laughs> Did we let him go? She's still thinking. <laughs> no, Al. No. Hayden. Hayden. These are ten seconds. Take my long. Okay, okay. Take, take my long. Everything happens in ten seconds. All right, all right, Should all right. I take my long sword and like stab like his like hit his arm so he like, makes it off? So you go around the back to get behind him. And flank. That means you get an additional plus two. So you switch Roll back hard. to your sword. Yep. So this is plus five, plus five, plus two. Nineteen plus twenty-one. That hits. Okay. Yep. That one. Wait, that's nineteen. Plus three. Yep. Yeah, because she had. Yeah, but he has the extra advantage. Five. Plus three is eight. Very good. Did he get him wrong? Yep. He got him. So now, it's the ally's turn. McGorg rolls up, and he casts his uh, cure. Um, wait, no. He's just going to come and hit him with his mace, because he's, he's a brave dwarf. Five. Misses. So now all three of you are surrounding this thing. Next is... Me. Yeah. And Parlo's not going to shoot because there's too many people there. He doesn't want to take the risk. <laughs> That's kind of the story. Magic users <coughs> have awesome stuff, but you're uh, you can move off when you're limited off. amount. You get you'll but get you better up there and you're high rock. You have mirror image too. I mean, so Please. you could use mirror image to cast that, and then there'd be three of you, and then you can run up. With a dagger, and you wouldn't know which one you can throw. Or I can do that in one turn, or I mirror image this time and dagger next time. Casting the spell would be this turn. You can move and then cast the spell. Yes. It's just a good defensive spell because even if you just hang out where you're at, at least there's three of you. Alright, so I'll do that. So choose where you want your other ones to be. You get two? <laughs> yeah, so she yeah, casts this, So she herself. casts um she casts a spell that duplicates herself, but two of them Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> do you wanna do you yeah, wanna whoa. go up, up behind and be with the goblin so he knows that somebody's in front of the gonna safe? go back there. With yeah. the goblin where the goblin's no. gonna be running to? Let me see. I mean you don't have the I want to distract them yeah. away from my teammates. I know, but I don't know. And then I'm going to go back there and watch 
I can't really watch, but make the goblin think I'm watching him when he comes back. So he knows he's safe? I don't want to see how, what the range on that spell is. I don't know that you can just cast it way out there. <laughs> Magic. She's an elf. She can do what she wants. No, I don't have that one. I thought I did, but no. A total of 1d4 images plus 1 image per 3 caster levels. So roll a d4, actually. That's how many there are. On the black thing? Black yeah. one, yeah. Yeah. Because it'd be two. I don't know what it is. Three. Look at the number. On what? Where? Three's on the bottom. Oh. So whichever one's facing the right way. Oh, okay. It's like an edit either phone, so I'm like, how do you know which one it is? Mommy, I'm hungry. Alright, here's another one. So, it says... That's just another one. She cast three, not two. Give a little bit into your... These figments separate from the caster and remain in a cluster around him or her. These mm -hmm. figments mimic the caster's actions, pretending to cast spells, drink That's potions, nice levitate, fun. and so on. <laughs> Dang things. Okay. Oh, Enemies no. attempting to attack or cast spells upon the caster always hit a figment instead. Any attack against the image destroys it, whether the attack roll is successful or, lock, or not. So can I, am I allowed to move? Can I get closer to so him? So they all stay around you. Yeah, you can move, but all your things move with you. Yeah, because I want to be up there to distract him so that so, these two can be safe. Yep, now you can move. So 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, let's say you get to here. So you're... you're How long does that spell last? Your group of <laughs> figments, it will last for a while. Oh, okay. So I'll make the one that's different your actual real one for now. Okay. So you're moving, and you see four of her heading towards this thing. Okay. So you could get relatively close and just chuck some daggers or something. Next is, um... Zenobia and now a tro. A tro! A tro. Alright. Do you want to stay where you're at and do it, or...? Just yeah. miss it. So we have to get 15? Yeah, 15. Yeah. Yeah. So it's okay. you're still you want to so rotate, you want to move, move or rotate, you still have movement. You could get away from him at least so you don't get the uh, the one damage at the end of the round. Yeah, back away. Yeah. Let's, let's back you up to here so that way you don't get the damage at the end. Next Jeez. is the enemy now. Group of <coughs> turns to I roll. In your own group, you don't have it. He trucks over McGorgle right. and runs through and swings to attack one of these images. Can you get off? Plus six is sixteen. What's your AC? Is definitely not sixteen. It's like eleven. Mm -hmm. Oh, it hits anyway. So, boom, this one disappears. On the <laughs> and then he swings to attack the horse with the other one, just because he's pure evil. 18, he hits the horse. The horse whimpers. Only one point of damage, though. Alright, next is Jill. I'm gonna, Rose. I'm going to return and hit him with my bow again. Okay, from behind, so add a plus two as well. There's a long fight. It's a big monster. 14, 16. That hits him. I'm going to have to roll this one for damage? Yep. What is this attack bonus? Do I get... Like, you're already adding, it's already round? in there. But that's four? plus four, so you're adding another one. Which is two. Plus. Okay. What are you doing? You already... I thought I had to roll the damage. You did. But that's, so that's just 1d6 straight, okay. so it's two points. Yeah. This is 14 plus 4, <laughs> and you get an additional t plus 2 because you're from the heart. So that's 24 yeah, you have more than that. So you did 4 points of damage. 
He's starting to look really, his guts are falling. He's leaving a trail of guts behind him as he runs. He's disgusting. He's absolutely disgusting. Next is, uh, wait, at the end of the round, did we do the, the aura? So Father McGorgel, or Master McGorgel, was within one, so he takes a point of damage. He's down to three. Um, and then one of your figments is around it, so you lose one of your figments. Well, no, that's not enough. Next is Joanne Alicia. What you doing? Uh, I'm going to unchain you, but you can't run. If you run, we will hunt you down and all of your family. Okay, deal. All right, I take the chain off. He's supposed to go and distract him, right? Yeah. So he just out. has no weapon? No weapon. He just, just has to be a distraction. He's running this way. <laughs> he turns around. Do you want to have a <laughs> mask looking for Adam? Like, watching him and make sure he doesn't... Am I allowed to use the knot? So you need to. Spell. You can, but that has to be where. Next turn. Yeah. So if he comes near it, you could magically tell that to wrap around him or something. Okay. He's too far though. Next is. Aiden. Aiden. Um. Maybe the frog and a long arrow and shoot from the back. Good. Yeah. Works. All right. Go for it. Yeah, because you don't want to be close to him because he does that, that evil damage. Now that misses. Now the allies. Parlo comes to here and shoots over the top. That's going to miss. Um, he gets the horse and he's trying to get the horse away. They're working on getting these horses away. Darren comes up to here and sends his eagle, and his eagle comes flying over and is latching onto his head and pecking on his head. Um, next is... Oh wait, McGorgel stands up. McGorgel stands up and whacks him in the back with his mace and totally misses. Uh, now it's Zenobia. Now I can dagger him? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, throw your dagger. So throw one of your daggers and you're going to add plus one. So red one plus one. And you're within range, so you're good. That misses. <laughs> so this thing sees three Zenobias all throw daggers. And they all go past her. So if her. she would have hit, would it protect the three daggers to hit him? They all do the same well, thing. Just no, it's just real. one's real. It's just a, like an illusion. Oh. So he doesn't so know, know like, where, where, where it's coming, coming from. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he'll always attack the other ones first. She'll be the last one. Because okay. she's got essentially like body armor. Alright, I'm sure. Sure, I'm gonna try to like hit with my Alright, so let's swing you out over here so you're not uh, gonna hit McGorgel. Boom, clear shot, go for it. Boom! Wow. There you go. Nice hit. That one hits. So roll your damage. 1d8. Um, wait, this one? Yep. Oh, six. 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 Four. Six. Six. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Alright, he is uh, quite damaged. Okay. Now, it's his turn. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Wow. No. He takes out another one of your figments. Runs over here, so bashes shoots. this over, and he's so mad. He sees his eyes on you and sets upon you with his other attack. He gets two attack. 18, that hits. Okay, is it my turn? Four points. 
So now, whoever's a, near. And plus an additional it. one because you're next to him. I don't like these things. Yeah, we got to figure out what it takes to get rid of him, huh? So, now it's, he's done? <clears throat> yep. I only have a short bow, so mine's not going to hit that. But I was no, come up there. Because yeah. I was going to come down when he was closer. You're and 20 of them. Our range is 50 feet, 100 feet, 150. Okay. Uh, then I should come up on the. Yeah, yeah I want to go up there because I was going to come down and dagger from behind me. Yeah, this is the best spot for you. All right. Come on, Gail. Come on, Gail. Yeah. Plus, yes. plus, plus, what is it? 11 plus. plus 4. Uh, Longo is plus four, and plus you're in short range, you're within 50, so you actually should be adding one more as well. So that's 16. 16, I think. So if you're inside 50 feet, you add an additional one. I'm so getting all the Take the red one out of the way. There you go. Big money. Good job. This thing is seriously injured. He loses it. She shoots his last arm was hanging off, or one of his arms was hanging on by a thread. She shoots that thread off. His arm flops on the ground. It's, it's flopping around on the ground. His guts have completely fallen out at this point. He, he, all you can see is in the middle of his body, all you can see is the uh, spine and his legs and his spine goes up and his fur is overhanging where his guts used to be and his mouth, his jaw's fallen off now so he only has the top of his jaw. So how many points does it have? Alicia, Alicia. Not much. He's, he's on his last legs. But he's a zombie so they fight to the death. Zombies never flee. They fight until they're dead. Next is Alicia, who is right next to this thing, and it's bearing down on you. I'm going to do the knot spell. Okay. And what, what part of him are you? He's huge, so what are you going to try to do? Take him down on his legs. Yes, take him down on his legs. Yep. So... <laughs> she takes that the chain that's next, and she magically wraps his legs with that chain. Around his legs, boom, he trips and he falls, crashing into this more again. Ah, but he's, so his legs are all tied up, but he's still slashing around. Next is Hayden. Alright, um, you're, you're back here. I wanted, I wanted to move, but move up to him and try to stab him in his stomach. How much movement do you have? I don't know. Yeah, yeah. yeah she's, he's only got 20 feet, I think. Oh, 30? Yeah. 20 feet. 20. So you can double move, so it'd be 10. 20, 30. 20, uh, 15, 20 can get you there. If you double move, you could shoot there from there if you wanted. Alright. Alright, roll it. Roll it hard. He's flopping around, rolling around. Oh, no, that one misses. Next is the allies. The gorgle. Gorgo comes up. Remember his eagle's still on there. And he comes up to here and he says, Eagle, be gone! And Magorgo starts to cast some sort of spell. And he goes down on it. Bah! And you see, like, it seems like the clouds open up for him. The, the coldness that you feel, everyone feels a buzzing of warmth. It's like an overwhelmingly powerful turn the undead he just did. Natural 20. Natural 20. He goes and shoots it at him out of his holy symbol. It goes into this thing, you can see its bones start to chatter, and they start to glow with a golden light. And all its bones start to, to, uh, to separate, and all of a sudden, poof! A puff of gold, and all that's left is a little gold smoke, and fragments fall to the earth, and he is completely gone in a magic... Uh, yeah, in a magic... He turns into dust. Yep. Wow. Now that's how we do it. <laughs> Alright, so do we have to go? That's Grampy. But well, yeah, Grampy yep. came out to save us all. Still running, by the way. Okay. Well, we need to get the goblin back. Do we need him? Yeah, but we don't. But have the rangers. 
So yeah, Ranger starts chasing after him. He's like, "You stop right there!" And he he, he collects him because uh, and then we don't. He's not gonna keep running because he's got a bow drawn on. So do we let him just keep walking with us, or do we tie him up again? Tie him up. Again. Who can speak this? But he helped us. us. Yeah. But he did run away. <sighs> well, we just told him to run to distract. We but not. I was just away. trying to distract him. Well, well, I was just trying to. You ran the wrong way. That wasn't a distraction. Misinterpretation, I guess. <laughs> Well, now you have to get tied up till we can actually trust you. Yeah. You get food, not freedom. Yeah, that's right. Humans are evil. Oh, well, you're evil too. Peace seems to return to the forest. That eerie coldness uh, starts to go away, and it takes a bit for you guys to collect yourselves and and. Uh, we really take that. We didn't. Mom, don't trust him again. He ran to try to get away from Well, I had to do what I needed to do that was best for all of us. Well, don't trust so him. What are you trying to run away from somebody else? Hold on here. Alright, so as everyone's gathering uh, the stuff back, back, without a fight. you still have your mirror images, by the way. They don't just well, go away. Yeah. So, <laughs> you see, over in this area, uh, where's... Where's Master Up on the secret thing right there. Yes, okay. So he's over here getting his, him and the other dwarf. Who's getting this? his Marlo? Yeah, mm -hmm. Marlo. Well, that's fine where he's that's at. That's cool. They're still up here, still looking out. I'll jump down. Over here. On the wagons, get off the wall. You see a strange glow, and you hear it start grinding. Glowing and grinding. And the rocks are lifting? The rocks disappear. And a magical swirling light appears from beneath. That is pretty. Brian, can you make a profession out of this? It should be a career. Keep paying your mortgage. Yeah. Don't quit your day job. So. You can see a magical, some type of portal opens up in the stone beneath. And out of, right about here, you see a figure start to appear. And as it gets closer down, it becomes more together. Twelve foot tall, heavily armored, amazing looking dwarf. Twelve foot tall dwarf? Huge dwarf comes to that point. McGorgal and Kimmick turn around. Ah! Ah! The Allfather! And they both get down. The Allfather! And they bow. This is their god, Morden, who has... Their Mor Morden, the Dwarven god, has shown himself to everybody. And everyone can see this. It's like a figure of him. It's not really him, but it's him, like, putting an image of himself so he can... Yeah, hologram. And Father McGorgo and Kimmick go, go up. Oh. oh, Holy One, it is an honor. What, what, what can we do for you? of evil. I have a most honorable quest for you and you alone. You are to go to the dwarven capital, Vam of Dur. There you will find the high hammer in the temple of steel. Speaking to my corporal. Any who ail. Drink from this water and be well. For a friend of Master McGorgo is a friend of mine. And he disappears again. And what he is around here becomes a magical pool of blessed godly water. And he said, any of it, McGorgo's friends drink from this water and you'll be healed. 
and McCorbel. So. So everybody would be here? If you drink it I'll do it. I'll do it. So this is Morden. That's the dwarven god. That's McGorgel's god. So, oh, Kimmich, Kimmich said, Master McGorgel, it is an honor. Oh, and he, Kimmich is like freaking out. He's like running everywhere. Did anybody see that? Did you see that? Oh, I need a, I need an apple juice. What? Did anybody see that? I need an apple juice. And he starts going, digging through. And, oh, there he is. He just starts drinking. Woo! I can't believe what I've just seen. My family's not going to believe this. And McGorgel turns around and says, Well, you heard Morden. I know we're beat up here. Have a drink. And he's, yeah, everything can drink from it. So he, McGorgel scoops down, some in his hand, and drinks, and he goes back to full health. Oh, we can have So we can just imagine that everybody did this. Yep. All things. Everybody's back to full health. So yep. they need to erase everything from there. Yep. Erase all your stuff, you're back to full health. If, if you drink from it, you're going to drink from it. You're going to drink from it? Yeah, I'll erase your If there's any sicknesses, any diseases, they all go away. All right. Make no hit points. points. No hit points, you're full health. And McGorgel says, well, I guess, I guess my adventure here with you guys is coming to an end. I've been given a new quest from my god. Um, so in case you didn't follow that, Morden has tasked the McGorgel to venture to the dwarven capital of Van Muldor, which is here. You guys are here at Valley Violence. He's got to go all the way across the Van Muldor. And he shows you on the map where it is. He's like, I've never been there. It's such a long journey, but if it's the one that's for my destiny, it's the one I will take. I'll tag along with you guys back to the town and pack up, and I'll be probably heading out shortly thereafter, but let's enjoy these last few days while we can. It's been an honor to fight with alongside of you. He gets back, and does anybody want to say anything to McGorgel? Say bye. Well, he's not leaving quite yet. He's gonna come back to tell us. Let's celebrate and enjoy these last few days together before you go on your last yeah. adventure. Yeah. All right. So, you guys get all your stuff back together, and um, you continue your travels. And Darren's like, all right, well. If anything was nearby, we'd know about it now. I think we're good for a while. You guys were up here in the mountain. Remember you have to take that trail down to the road? Mm, yeah. So you'll get that trail down to the road and then you're going to turn left. So nothing else happens on your way down. Um, relatively straightforward. You get down to the road. And you begin to take off to the left down the road. It's slow going because there's so many people. And even though you have horses, there's other people on foot. So you have to all stay together. Um, you're only as fast as your slowest traveler. So, we continue. Um, and you cross the bridge. No problems. And it's getting, it's getting uh, dark at this point. It's, it's like dusk. And you get about halfway... Um, halfway back to the town and Darren's like, well we can either press on through the night or we can uh, make camp here at the side of the road you're about halfway back all the such a town fight through it? yeah Okay. so everyone's really tired so if anything pops up you take negative one on all your rolls I think we point. should take a break. We just had a long fight and we don't want to lose any points. You well, you're all back to all full health. Yeah, yeah. But Everyone's back to full health. Do you want to take a chance with something coming? Oh. Do you want to push through the night to get to the town? Or do you want to take we'll a break? Just, we'll just take a break. And like drink. And we want to take a quick break. We don't want to just... Well, we'll just stay the night on the side of the road. 
You don't it's want to? It's just him? on the side of the road. <laughs> and, right. it's, and like have a party for gold our gold. victory. Okay. And yeah. Gold. Have a private party before you get back. <laughs> All right, that's fine. That the road cuts straight through here. And uh, you guys go ahead and set up some tents that you have. The, the workers get busy. And uh, you have your meal. One of the, uh... Gee, she took me off the Because <laughs> oh, you're so small. <laughs> they just imagine they've created a nice uh, campsite there and everyone's around. The, the other people are doing their watches because your hirelings do all the tedious stuff, like looking out. Wait, hey, where is Nugo? Um, yeah. Is Nugo taking his horse back? He's still with you guys, yeah. He's going to probably take his horse because it makes that long journey a lot easier. Um... But he's still with you now. He's not going to go off yet by himself. Um, so the evening comes. And you break out the, or the, the juice, the apple juice, and they're passing them around. Does everybody want an apple juice? Yeah. 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 You can see the foam build up on the dwarves. Uh, beards as they, they drink their apple juice and they tell stories. Night goes by uneventfully. Dawn. You're in town now. All right, so you're coming in the yeah. front door. Here we go. So these guys all go see their, all your hirelings. Uh, you pay them what they were owed, and they say, "Well, it's been a privilege to travel with you." Oh. Everyone in the tavern is dead. Thought we were coming back from the. Long, long night of drinking apple uh, juice. And where are those sleep. guys? That little guy who talks crap every time we try to steal our horse. <laughs> oh. So remember, after your the remember you killed his friend and his other friend you killed in the town square yeah. in the trial by yeah, combat. I that. Because first you guys ambushed them and killed their friend. Then oh. they when you came back to town they charged you again for murder. You were deemed innocent, but then they executed their trial by combat. You still won, and then you killed his other friend, so he was only one left, and he said, I'll get you one day, and he left the town, so you don't know where he is. He said, I will pay you back one day, but I'm gone. So he's actually not here, but you're the only one that was there. Hayden is the one that killed him. So he doesn't even know any of you guys. It's only Hayden. No, I only killed him because he was taking crap back for our friendship. So what happens with these... Were they hirelings? Yeah, so they, they go, go back, back. I mean, they're back to families. They're towns first, so yeah, they'll go I'm, back to the families. I'm waiting for the cop to his friends morning. What are you doing with the goblin? No friends, sounds like you killed Because the goblin friends. is tied up no, outside. No friends who, they have, they had some, that's the lady that gave Wait, us Guys, food. what do you do with the goblin? Guys, what are you going to do with the goblin? Did you, you just bring the goblin back to town? Is that everybody? No, 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 we got, mm -hmm. we got to do something with him. No, I say, um, to one of the rangers, they, um, Try to hide the goblin so no one sees him. If they see them, they'll, they'll think we're with him. And Parlo do that? So you want to hide him outside the town yeah, before you get yeah, there? Yeah, but like one of the rangers like stay with him. Okay, so no, well, no, 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 my no, contract no. is up, but I'll take ten gold if you want me to watch him. Sure. All right, so take ten gold out of your party fund. For the bottom. So three ninety. Okay, so let's say that uh, the brothers, the brothers are just outside of town in the woods, keeping an eye on him. But they are going to want to go see their family, so you don't want to leave them out there forever. Um. All right. So you get to the the tavern. I'll talk. So this is what you see. This one you see regular townsfolk. Um, some. One of them lost their <clears throat> yeah, yeah, that's the lady. Remember, she, she, her arm was ripped off by a wyvern ten years ago. Uh, let's see, where am I? What's a wyvern? A wyvern is like a 
dragon type creature, but it's not a full dragon. It's more just an animal. And it's only got two legs. The dragon has four. Well, I think that's it. Um, <coughs> the other one, you see in this corner, you see four really good looking adventurer types. You see a, a guy with two swords, like a cool looking sneak guy. You see a awesome wizard with a huge staff. And then you see a big, burly, viking looking dude. And he's got a huge horned helmet. And then you see a cleric with a green shield and a... These guys, so they look super cool and super strong. Over here you see a wealthy looking uh, guy dressed in chain, like nice, really nice clothing. He's got darker skin, and you know that the darker skin people come from the south and south stand. <coughs> So he's what's called a South Sandy. South Sandy. And he's got two big burly guys with him, presumably bodyguards. So you don't know what his deal is, but he's definitely rich. Over here, as soon as you walk in the door, Alicia, Lily and Percival Frank see you and say, Alicia, it's so great to see you. These are the two that you saved from the bandit cave. Remember, you, you saved them, and uh, you're the only one left that did that. So they only recognize you. So, uh, they, they wave you and are happy to see you. You can see Father Ambrose over here talking to a uh, old poor ne'er-do-well, presumably trying to get him to stop sinning. Uh, you see a couple people up at the bar drinking some uh, apple juice and orange juice and stuff. You see Honora serving, and who is this? There are just guys. Yep, there's an open table for you. Are you going to take an open table? Yeah. yeah, we want no problems. We just fought. Everyone is fairly aware of you guys. And, um, after the last... Can I go get a juice? Yep. Anora Anor comes out. Where oh, are you? Am I too short for all There you are. Yeah. That's We're exactly the point. Put You're on the table. <laughs> You're small. They're coming to you. I want to get a juice. is happy to see you. I want to get a juice too. I'm bring the juice to you. Anora was going to come over, but by the time she did, you already went over there. Oh, Aiden. Hey, Good to see you. Good to see you. I'm glad you made it back from your last adventures. Yeah. Well, can I get you guys some drinks? Are you ordering for everybody? Yeah. What are they going to have? I'll get it ready. You want some juice? Everybody? Yeah. Any food with that? Um, yeah. I'll I got a house special. We have a big I'll, I'll have, I'll have a burger. <laughs> a burger? Well, we don't have any burgers today. What we have is a big, we're having a communal pot of soup. Yeah. You see that big bowl? It's a big stew of venison. It's going to be great. Okay. That's all we have today. We'll take it. Okay. So a couple minutes later, when well, he comes back, but... Probably would have taken you kind of take what you can get. Okay. She comes back and she uh, serves you guys a bunch of uh, juices. some juices and stuff, and then you get your meals. All right. So you chomp down, and after you're done eating, now what? Uh, oh, she says. Hey, by the way, I don't know if you've heard. Go check out the bounty board. Lord Harold has doubled the rewards for any monster parts. Who's that? Lord Harold <coughs> is the lord of the town. The leader of the town, remember? Do you, you still have your bag ears. of ears? You're gonna give yeah. ears. So, you can get goblin ears, cobalt ears, bullywook tongue, hobgoblin ears, orc tusks, kekwala tail, which is a lizard man, bugbear, knoll, zipcon, parabashri, ogre, all these different monsters, if you get the pieces, they're worth money oh, for yeah. helping clear the area. <laughs> but they said that Lord Harold has raised all the bounties by two, so, so everything's, everything's so double need, reward right we now. Go, we need to go release our people so we can go back to the family and wash the goblin and turn in our goblin ears. Now that we've eaten and had a drink. Anything else that you guys want to do in here? Talk to anybody or I'll just talk, go, to I'll the, talk and go to the adventurers? Go to the adventurers. Yeah, I want to be in the adventurers. No, I am both of you. <laughs> I'm in trouble.
<laughs> Can I go out and release our goblin people? Yeah. So what are you going to do? Release those people. You're going to watch them now? Okay. I'm going to be a thief with empathy over here. That's fine. I mean, you don't have to be. Wait, can I bring the wagers in? Those people? Hmm? Those, I thought those people were No, they went to their families. Oh. Yeah, she re she replaced them. She's out there now instead of them. So they can go home to see their family. Oh, they can come back? Mm -hmm. If you hire them again, maybe. Um, but their contract is up, so every all your hirelings have uh, gone home. But they're all in town. Okay, so you come up to uh, these big adventurers, and they turn. Can we help you? Yes. What do you want? We're asking, are you a bunch are you like a bunch of people? Aye, uh, we are. We just come from Wolf Pass Ruin. Oh, we just came from Wolf Scar Ruin. We just came from fighting a hot uh, oh, a dead, dead uh dead yeti. A dead yeti. A dead dead yeti. Generally you don't fight the things that are dead. But the, it came a lot. They had these purple these purple things oh. around it. The, the cleric speaks up and says, You said it came alive. Yes. Yeah. What's these? What do you mean? We see. We saw these purple um, lines around the body with magic. And mm. He tried to stay alive by himself. But we defeated him. Most peculiar. That type of thing only happens when there's a necromancer about. That worries us. But uh, we're not from around here. We were just stopping in on our way back to Clifford Castle. Where are you from? We're from Clifford Castle. We came to the area to check out Wolfscar Ruin and the Wolfscar Pass to the north. So he points on your map. He says, up here in this pass, way up top, between these two mountains, is Wolfscar Pass. And in the middle of that, there's an old castle ruin. And they heard that there was lost treasure there. And they said, yeah. We went up there and defeated some trolls. We found the, the loot and we're headed back home. It was a good adventure. Hey, Brian. But I got a word in you about something. I don't know if you're planning to head up that way, but we saw lots of orcs. Lots and lots of orcs. They're, they're assembling for battle or something. They're training in regiments. Hey, Brian. Dozens of them. Can you, like, bring some of our, like, our... Then the three other ones over there and talk to them like and see if they go will be like if they like to be on a career. Would you like to join us? We are a team. Ah, these guys look well more powerful than you. They say, sorry buddy, we have our own tales to to follow. But uh, it's nice meeting you. Do you do you need any information or any advice? I, I would uh, be careful about those undead, though. There must be a necromancer up there. He was just like a beast. So we were like walking down, and one of our scouts found him, found this whole um, pile of white stuff on the ground, and he got put, he got put to work, and he saw, he saw like this, the animal was like facing dead with his eyes closed, and like. Like a, when when we start we started moving on, but then we got we heard the we heard like <coughs> and we, and then the thing came alive with these purple things around. Mm. Do you want to see? Ow. Sure. Can you kill a necromancer? Do you want to see if they know uh, where they like to You can kill them? a necromancer. Well, that's pretty. But you have to find them. There. A necromancer is just a wizard of evil magic. Do they have so you guys start to hear some. You hear some serious stuff, and well, I'm outside, like, so I'm we should uh, we should get in on this, and you guys, the rest of you, pile around. So, so what were your have you like have you been have you bumped into these guys you like like this this little we guy? We haven't seen any necromancer. No. no people, do they know we what they not, like to say? No. The Gorgle says, uh, yes, I agree, it was a necromancer. Um, he says, uh, I've, I'm headed back to Van Muldor myself. Um, my friends here will have to investigate, figure out where the necromancer is.
because that could present a massive problem to the to the valley. Because every so they explain that if there's a necromancer around, everything that you kill can be raised, just like that yeti was. So if you kill a bunch of goblins, a necromancer can raise them all up, and you have to fight them again, dead. So if they don't want to go travel with us, can we find out where they think it is? So. I don't know, we haven't explored that side of the valley too Wait. much, but... So, so, do you have, like, any gold or weapons? I'm not going to give it to us, so why would you need to know that? Uh, we came across some stuff, uh, might be interested in a trade, maybe, what do you have? Do you have any magic weapons, or magic stuff? We're not trading the ring. I know. Oh, I forgot to use your ring. We don't have anything, pretty much. We don't have anything? Well, that's not going to do you any good in a trade. Mm -hmm. We don't have anything either. Well, we got to head out back to our... You have a what? We have a goblin. <laughs> we have a goblin. Wait, Wait. We, have a go we have a goblin, but one of our friends are watching. We caught him, and we were going against these whole bunch of goblins, and I shot him in the ear, started to bleed it, and then... The mass, and then he was the master king when we shot him here. So then we cut. He his, sure do like to talk. We cut his, we cut his whole family off, and we had to talk to this guy. And this, and this I think you're giving this, out too much okay. information. This guy needs to talk crap. To them. He always They're talk all looking crap. around at each other. The, right. the four of them you're, are. You're giving out okay. too much if, information. Here. Is are there weapons <clears throat> worth more to us? Than what we're gonna get for the goblin ears? Mm -hmm. Magic stuff is worth thousands, like thousands. Wait, I you got, I, I, I got an idea. idea. I got an idea. I got an idea. Oh my I got God, a, guys. No, I got a good idea. We gotta let the other people talk. Yeah, you gotta let them talk. You can talk Crazy. the whole time. All right. Do you have anything to say, Max? Well, I was gonna say what he said, but he's going too far. Um, we have goblin ears. Information. Yes. <laughs> That's not a bad idea. Make sure you get the information from him. But never we trust did. a goblin as far as that. We yeah. We tr we, when we were fighting that yeti, he tried to run away. At least one of our guys caught him. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I turn around well, to these guys. all I can say is if you guys have a necromancer problem, you might want to burn the dead as you kill them. Don't right. leave the bodies. So burn, when you like kill at something, Burn the body, because a necromancer come by, he'll raise it up just like he did that yeti, and you have to fight him again. That's my advice. But uh, we're heading out in the morning. We're headed back to Cliffold Castle, but Master Dwarf there, you said you were headed to Van Muldur. And McGorgel says, yes, I was. He said, well, we'd be glad to help you along your, on your journey. We've never been there, and we've heard awesome tales. And McGorgel says, uh... That sounds great. It'd be nice to have some uh, companions on my trek. And you look like a, a strong bunch of adventurers. We should be a mighty crew. Hello? Well, he, we already know he was leaving. Yes. We know he has to leave. Mm -hmm. So, but now, but now we want our friend to make sure he's safe. He's going to be with other people to help him get yep. to his next place. So now he doesn't have to go by himself. He's got a, a crew that wants to go with him because they want to see the Dwarven capital. Well, we're at, we're at an, we're at an, in one of our heading somewhere else, too. Yeah? Yeah, we don't know where we're going. Yeah. Gonna, we don't know where we're going, but we, we already know that we're so heading somewhere. They say, all right, well, it was nice talking to you guys. Yeah. Uh, Master McGorkle, we'll see you in the morning. We're heading out in first light. So you guys go back to your table. No, we go there. I go there. Oh, you go here. Hey, I'm Master. I'm talking. I want to talk to the big fatty one. Hang on, one at a time. Have a yore, you, you talk to my bodyguards like this. Why you do that? Why you sound like poopy? <laughs> you sound like poopy. <laughs> I have many merchandise to sell you, but I do not sell to rude people. You come here to insult me, I do not do business with people like that. I have uh, lips.
Lips, Arcanis, Litrix Arcanis, Armor, Magic, I have Magic Weapon, Larek. You do not find these types of things from the regular traders. Do you have Rasvim? Treasure. Do you have treasure? Rasvim? Yes, we have treasure. But we're not giving them to you because they're on. Oh, we do business. I, you know, I know this. I'm not new to this. You sell, I buy, I buy, you sell, whatever. We don't sell stuff. We buy Save. stuff. Can we use anything that they have? If you'd like to do business, we take it outside because I do not want other people to see what I have. This is why I have the bodyguards. Tell me what do I have then? I have magic weapons. I have magic armor. I have magic scrolls. How much are you trading for? Oh, okay. Hey. Wait, so you had that? Well, how about I have a magic turn, a ring, what turn me magic? Don't, don't tell everybody. Ah, ring of ring. No, he didn't say that. He didn't say that. He didn't say Do not worry. Do not worry. If I steal, I don't get very good customers later. I well, not steal. I work a deal. If you steal. I have lots of money. I give you 2000 for it. No. No. 2000 for it. I do Go business. No, no, no. You no, buy from no. me. No. Do you, do you have stuff to help us against the Macromancer? The Macromancer. The Macromancer. Am I still outside? The Macromancer. I'll come keep you company. Make a new friend. The Macromancer. Whoa! Can you stop talking like that? Well, talk yeah. That's his accent. He's a mother. He's from somewhere else. So he's from all the way down. So this is the whole continent. You guys are all the way up here, right? Yeah. This is where Ephria. Yeah, it's from Mendes. Van Mulder's already here. He's from South Sam, all the way at the bottom from the desert. He's traveled, he travels, I travel across the whole realm, buying and trading well, for goods. Well, I need to tell you something. Mm. Yeah. We fighted, we thing. fighted you, this man, you have this, magic weapons. We fighted you, this, do you have magic weapons? Yes, I do. Let me tell you what I have. Then give me some I have magic arrows. Magic I have Ooh. a magic sword. I can you how much are you? I have a magic sword Ooh. that casts light. You 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 say I command the word and the the blade glows and shows you. Lights the way like a torch, a magic torch. Magic arcanis. I have a sword of light. I also have armor. It protects from fire. But how much are you paying for that? No, 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 no. I would sell this. I also have. Uh, how much would you sell, sell that for the armor? If you have a <clears throat> necromancer problem. You might need scrolls, you need magic, you must have magic to fight magic. I see you have a magic user with you. How much will you pay for that? I have scrolls of all these spells. How much will you pay for that, Ma? I don't pay, you pay, you buy. How much is he selling it for? Oh, yeah. Yeah. How much are you for? I know what you need and I'll do a good deal of this. A bag of holding. And he pulls up his little bag. And it's got gems on it, and it's like a little pouch. Watch. Give me something that weighs a lot. Weighs a lot? Give me something no, that weighs a lot. No, that's not a view. That's not a view. Wait, he's, not he's right he's in the middle of the tavern. He's just showing us how to use it. He's, gonna, he's not Watch. Gonna steal it's a demonstration. It. Look. Fine, Bufo, give me your battle axe. 
He takes a boot full of his battle axe. Look, watch. It's just a little bag. He takes his big battle axe. And it goes in this little bag. Feel, feel how heavy. It feels light. Like, almost like nothing. Now, nah, get back. He pull, reaches in, pulls the battle axe back out. You can feel the weight. This is called the bag of holding. This is what you want. If you're an adventurer, this makes your treasure lighter. You can carry more. I will sell this for 1000 390. You have about you have about 600 gold pieces now. He's asking a thousand. What about her? But ears? you also have some other yeah, stuff here. You have some other stuff here that you could it? show and potentially sell. You have magic. You have magic weapons and stuff that you could potentially trade, like stuff that you might not be using. Like you have a long sword plus one plus and a battle axe. You probably don't need both. So that's probably worth something. Um, so you could probably sell one of those if you want the axe or the sword. I'd probably get rid of the long sword. Okay. Ooh, this is a nice long sword you have. I'll tell you. I do a straight trade just for you. You give me the sword, I give you the bag of holding, and we call it even. Okay, so he makes that sword. So, you, did, you have a bag of holding, so put the bag of holding in your um, party fund. Wait, Ryan, is that... Oh, you see, as you're transferring stuff, what are these figurines? These wooden figurines, I see this. What? What? Remember those little wooden figurines you found in the, uh, in the cave that had all the different animals? You had the oh, mountain yeah, magic. All the different ones. Yes. Found it. Let me see one, let me see. You know this is magic. Yes, we do. We do. These are wooden figurines of animal summoning. You take the animal you want, Whoa. you throw it on the ground, say the name of the animal, and it appears. Your friend. Well, can you that I'll give you about that necromancer. No, no, no. We want that. We don't want to do that. I'll give you five. Choose together. I'll give you five hundred gold per figurine. No, no, not you. No, we want that. So you have the ones that you have are written there. No, Robert eats so we eat it. So they become no. friends. So you but could have... have a mountain lion, a reindeer, a black bear, a rabbit, and a mountain goat. Oh, that's a good one. Just give me a rabbit. Yes, I'll take the rabbit. Okay. So add 500 gold. If you take that deal, is that the deal that you mm -hmm. accept? Yes, yeah. we'll accept the deal. We'll accept the okay, we'll take 500 gold, no problem. Gives you 500 gold and then erase that one. Let me see. I also have spells. If there's any spells. So this is a very important time for magic users. Because he's offering you, it's very hard to find this. He's offering you the chance to buy spell scrolls, which means you'd be able to learn the spells. If there's anything in here, because magic users have to acquire scrolls to learn new spells for them. So he would sell you a scroll, and then you would study the scroll. How much is the scroll? It's going to be 500 per spell level. So 500 gold. Alright, hey, 400. I do 400 for you. Special and... offer, 400. Do we want to go sell our ears and come back to him so we have more money? Yeah, 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 yeah. So you guys want to go do that while they're yeah, looking through? Talking, yeah. Okay, so how many ears did you have? Was it on this one? 13 goblin ears. Well, I'm watching the... We ain't gonna watch the Okay, so 13 goblin ears is gonna get you five gold pieces that adds those... Five gold pieces? Yeah. That's it? That's a lot of money. You have to understand. Uh, you're asking for 400. You're this is magic. This is you have to understand, like, 
It costs like so two five. silver pieces so, just to stay right. in the house. Like, so then we're magic five, items. Eight, nine, five, oh, you four, guys four, basically four. are walking around like Donald Trump with 400. Like, that is a lot of money. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. How much did you get? Four hundred back. So we have 895 gold pieces now. Okay, that, that's the only So we can get rid of 400 to buy a spell. So you can get two first level spells. Can we get so the healing potion? We sell them 400 each, first level spell. A second level get, spell would be 800. Can we get So you can have a ton of spells. You can. So I have all these, but it's you can only prepare certain ones. Yeah. Okay. He says, "All right, let me see." And he's going through all the different stuff that you guys have. I'll give like you a potion, and you a potion, and you have fifty gold. If you two go together, and you two. Oh, I'm not getting in on this. You don't. I'm home safe, my mother. We gotta go against that necro guy. This Eldir will sell you each a potion of your choice. He's got, he's got potion of growth, which will make you big, like really big, like a giant. He's got giant strength, which will make you strong. He's got levitation, which means you can kind of fly a little bit. And he's got speed. Well, I'm knowing that you can be um, a strong or strong. What? Giant strength? And which one do you want? I only have one of them. Well, you had speed? You said you wanted yeah, speed. I want speed. Okay. So you're gonna, they they use their, their money to buy themselves a scroll of speed and a scroll of strength. And what do you guys want to do? Can I get anything to let them take your foot? Yes. What can I get? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, I'll just take some. Can you buy some arrows? Do I have an outer arrow? Yes, you do. Have you been excellent with your arrows? Yeah. I don't know. There's all equipment. What do you mean, X knocked my arrow out? Right here. You're right. Okay, we'll try it. Alright, so we'll do protection from evil and a potion. Information. Information. Alright, so you get the protection of evil. Where does uh, that go? Scroll. Put it in the party fund, that way whoever's here and needs it. You also have that potion of heroism, too, that no one's carrying. Where the heck is What do you put in the bag of holding on top? Brian. Okay, so what, what was the spell for? Protection from evil. That's Brian. a first level spell. Yeah, and then we need whatever the potion is. Protection from evil scroll. Do you want a case for your scroll? Um, and then you're going to buy a potion of healing from Father Ambrose, so that's 200. Dude, where the heck are the arrows in there? And then you basically have no one for them. Protection. That puts us at 350. Brian. Okay. Brian. 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 We need oh, wow. 400 no. plus 200, right. that's minus 600, so you have like 239 left or whatever. 295. Okay. Yeah. So I want to buy... He said that he had some magic arrows. But I'm not... In four. F? I'm not going to... He'll sell you... Not for 50 gold pieces. He'll sell you one magic arrow plus one. Got it. So Plus one magic arrow. So basically, you would add one to your attack and one to your damage if it hits. Okay. Ten gold each. So you could buy five magic arrows. I don't want to do all of mine. That's the point. I'm going to buy giant nuts. Two of them. Okay. All right. So you guys are all back at your own table, yeah? This is one of the tucks, Matt. Darren says. Uh, Consider giving that goblin a good meal and get a lot of information out of him, and then up to you if you want to kill him or let him go. 
You don't want to keep, or you can even turn them into the town guard. They might give you a better kill reward him. for them. Kill him, kill him. No, 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 I've been withholding a lot of information about what's truly going on in this valley. But, it's time Stop. for you to know. Who's talking now? This is, this is Darren. Oh, okay. Darren, so he works for Morris the Mage, which is like the wizard that's kind of looking after everything. Mm -hmm. He says, um, the reason I was looking for a bone shell chimera wasn't just for a hunt. Because a bone chill chimera contains magical elements that when we take those bits of that monster, we can turn them into magic items to help us in our quest. Because we've known that there's a, a necromancer in the valley. So now you you've seen there. it. Yes, but I didn't know it was how real it was. We, we had a hunch, but now we know mm -hmm. it's real. And we have a necromancer to deal with. Enough of these goblins. Those are petty monsters. A necromancer is the real deal. We've got to hunt him down, figure out where he is, and kill him. But we need the bone chill chimera because we think there's something more to it. I think that necromancer, Morris thinks that necromancer is trying to summon a demon from the underworld. And if that demon gets summoned, we're going to have the biggest problem. And if a demon is summoned, we're going to need those parts from the Bone Chill Chimera to defeat him. Because demons can't be killed with mortal weapons. We have to enchant them with magic. So he says, I want you to continue your quest in the valley and try to track down where that necromancer is. And you've got to take him down. There might be more to it. Be wary of the orcs. I know you heard that the orcs are massing for war of some sort. We don't know what that could be. Look into that. And, um... He says, uh... Yeah, so go get more information out of that goblin. And I'm gonna go back and see Morris. Whenever you guys are ready, come to Morris. Don't come back to town. And in case you didn't notice, Elvier works for us as well. That's who you guys want to sell. The old guy um, has been Eldir is Morris's brother. And he says, they know. So Eldir's with us. Keep that a secret between us. Eldir keeps an eye on the town for us. I keep an eye out on the wilderness, and Morris is the mastermind. So do you guys have any questions for Darren before he goes? Or so we're gonna meet back up with him before we go on this next. No, it's, no. He's he doesn't adventure with them typically. The only reason he was there is because he's guiding so her back. So if we go do all of this stuff, we're supposed to then also before we come back to town next, we have to go to Morris. You can come back to town, but make sure you come see us. We're gonna be operating out of the tower from now on because we don't want to be in the town. If anything happens, we want them to come for us, not the town. We want the monsters to attack us. We want to keep the monsters out of the town. If we have a tribe of orcs who attack the town, they're going to be all dead. If a demon gets summoned, they're going to be all dead. We have to protect the town. Any questions for him? Any questions for anybody else in the tavern before you go talk to the goblin again? Alright. Did you write any of it down? Or Wait, I'm, I've been all? wanting to talk to this guy. What do you want? Don't bother me while I'm drinking my ale. <clears throat> my orange juice. <laughs> what do you want? Are you... Make it quick. Do I don't have all day. What happened to your eyes? It was poked out. A long time ago when I was an adventurer like you.
before? No, the thing that like... Yeah, have you ever been to an necromancer? No. A necromancer? These are things of legend. Necromancers haven't been on the earth for 14,000 years. But I guess they're back. I'm hearing rumours. But if you have come across a necromancer, make sure you burn the bodies. Because you don't want them to be raised. Mm. Okay, can we get a room? I'll tell you one thing. For you. If you're up on the mountains, you're going to the cold mountains. There's bugbears up there. You got to watch out for the bugbears. They're on the Bob top bears? ridge. Yes. Bob it shows you on your map. You already have it shown. It doesn't look like you know what it is. It's bugbears. That's where they're at. Well, the giant goblins full of fur. We defeated a bear. An owl bear. bear. <clears throat> This is a bugbear. It's a big furry goblin. It's like so you have three there's three types of goblins. You have the little goblin, you have the medium goblins, which are like good warriors, and then you have these big brutes. Can we have a little one with us? Yeah, those are the small ones. Well, we've been through we've been through an owl bear. An owl bear. Very nice. I'm gonna get back to my apple juice. Okay, now leave me alone. That. We will! You buy for that. <laughs> we have to be careful. We, can't be caught. we don't want to make any enemies in the town. Oh, you talk. You got to be careful. All right. Make you guys going to go interrogate the goblin now? So you can finally get rid of him? My piece of food. Yes, yes. Want to be, yes but first, <clears throat> we need more information. We need more information. Give me food, please. I'll tell you everything. Give me some food. Here it comes. 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 So you give him a, a bit of the fresh, hot venison stew and he slips it. Oh, thank you. My name is Blippet anyway. Blippet, nice name. Yeah. My mother gave it to me before you slaughtered her. I was a scout. Our chief was named Snake the Axe. He's the one you cut his ear off. Sneak him into He's a dead now. I see. You guys talk of these goblins over here. The brown goblins are stinky, nasty. We yellow goblins are above them. So he basically telling you, remember the original goblins that were on the other side? The first goblins <laughs> yeah. has nothing to do. It's two different tribes. So there's a yellow tribe and then the brown tribe. Now you've eliminated all of them pretty much. He says, um, well, I guess there's not a whole lot left of the goblins on the yellow side anyway, but, um, like I said, there's the hobgoblins. They're led by, um, <coughs> Chief Avrak Keck. He say, he says, his prized sword, Flame Tongue, was stolen. And he believes the orcs had something to do with it. And he hates the orcs. The other thing you need to know about those hobgoblins, we, uh, my tribe was allied with them anyway. We don't really talk much with the bugbears. The bugbears live up and do their own thing. But the hobgoblin captain, the number two, is Volzozar the Blade. Some believe he should be the real leader. He is vicious and he is scary. You do not want to be on his bad side. The captain really hates humans, so you have to be careful around him. He would rather attack Bittershire, but the chief wants to attack the orcs. He wants his blade back. So can he help us at all with this? Do, do they like him? If you would like to arrange a meeting, maybe I can be your interpreter. Mm. That's an interpreter. He's so going to help like us hear what they say. Tell us what. If we can understand it. I don't know. 
If you come across Chief Avrak, he might be willing to speak to you. But if you come across Volzazar first, it'll be bloodshed. But what if what if we have him with us? Does he have any pull with them? Would they spare us? Oh, I know can... them. I, I know them. I mean, I'm just a lowly goblin, as they say all the time. But if I know them, I could at least maybe set up a meeting. Okay. If that's what you would desire. Whoa. How? So we're talking about the Hobgoblin tribe, right? Mm -hmm. Remember the ones that killed Trowbridge? Because all, remember, you came out of the crypt and they offered you a deal. A hundred gold, give us a hundred gold pieces and we let you go. But you guys didn't give them the gold pieces, so they attacked. Mm -hmm. You guys actually attacked when you were invisible. But then Trowbridge died, and then you killed three of them and one fled back to their cave, and then you left them there. That's the ones we're talking about. So So he says that there's a chief who hates the orcs and wants to go kill the orcs because the his flaming sword was stolen. Then there's the number two who doesn't really care about fighting orcs. He wants to attack the village. Can we... So, you might... No one's writing notes. You might want to remember this stuff because I'm not going to help you when you go to negotiate or whatever you're going to try to do. So we have to do what? So there's the chief goblin. You have a whole back empty picture. Huh? Mommy. He hates Mommy. orcs. <coughs> Number two wants to attack the village. Chief Avrak. Chief Avrak. Chief Avrak. Chief Avrak. Chief Avrak. Chief Avrak. Chief Chief hates the orcs and believes they stole his flaming sword. The number two is Volzazar and he is Vicious, hates humans, and would rather fight the town. Do we have humans in our group? Yeah. yeah. And, and Ryan yeah. hates humans because they're not the two the same. He wants to get the village, which is the humans, and the chief goblin wants the orcs. Yeah, but and so I mean, if so you're going to go negotiate with them, this is very important stuff. So and what then we don't mean? want these two to go talk to them because number two hates humans. Yes, and then what if we keep the goblin? And we set up a meeting. This is just nothing said this time. And then we tell them that we tell Chief Goblin and Number Two that if they let us pass through, Number Two is the captain. Well, what? The chief is the one. If we let they let us pass through, if we come in contact, they don't do with us. If we come in contact with any orcs and we find this guy's arrow or the sword, like we'll bring it back to him if they let us. We'll be, on the, we'll, the we'll be on the watch for his sword if so you have any Is that what you want to do then? So you your now your plan is you wanna keep you're gonna keep blip it. We wanna right? have as many things on our side as we you're can. You're gonna keep blip it the and then you're gonna go back to the hobgoblins and then try to well, we have talk to them or yeah. kill them or whatever. Well I say we don't wanna have any more you want to avoid bloodshed. Yeah, so we talk to them, and we let them, we keep help a bit, or keep them, if he stays with us and on our side, we'll keep him safe, keep him fed, yeah. he won't have to be tied up, he <laughs> sets us up, that's a better end compared to he sets us up with the other guys, and we come up with a deal with him, that if we come in contact with any orcs, and we find his sword, we'll keep it, and bring it back to him, if they let us pass through without any, yeah, they can't attack against yeah. us. Okay. Alright, so you guys can plan what you're going to do when you get there. So now I know you guys plan to go back to the Hobgoblins then, right? So you don't want to go, you're not going to go directly to the Orcs. You're going to go to the Hobgoblins, right? So you know the Orcs are up here, the Hobgoblins are here. So if you were going to go to the Orcs, you'd probably go up on this side of the, the thing, the river. Get but you're going to go on the hobgoblin side. So Plus all this is already clear, so it's, you know it's relatively safe. Yeah. Although you know that the necromancer is up here somewhere, too. So, well, at least we know. We need to burn at least you know what to expect. Yeah. So, so you're going to go back to the hobgoblins. Then. Same route? Yeah. Okay. And we can't get the hobgoblins, like, the little bit can't be like a, his meat in the middle, you know? But well, he's with you. He doesn't have a phone. Oh, I guess that's true. <laughs> yeah, you can't, and you can't just trust him enough to let him go. And then All right. Goes. So he's just 
going to be with us and help us get through the Yeah, we're good.